What's up guys? So of course, doing a bit of a graphics card check-in from the last generation, we could not ignore the Intel Arc. Intel's first real attempt into the graphics card market, and to be honest, they didn't do that bad of a job. But for those that do own them, they know that there are issues. And obviously today, we're going to be checking to see, have they actually improved or not? So when Intel actually came into the market, they didn't do a bad job of the graphics cards at all. Their boxes look pretty fine, and to be honest, the cards, they look stunning as well. This is the Intel Arc A770 that we picked up at launch, and to be honest, it's not bad. Hardware-wise, they look absolutely gorgeous, nobody can actually deny that. And to be honest, in terms of hardware specifications, they're pretty good as well. The issues they had though were obviously with their drivers, and anybody that actually bought one does realise, and did realise at the time, that they were being more of a bit of a beta tester. That's not too bad if you like to tinker and you like decent hardware, but for those of you who wanted something straight out of the box, it probably wasn't worth you going for. Now Intel have dropped a number of drivers for these cards since it was actually released, and I must admit they have been getting better, particularly when it comes to actually running some of those older titles, whereas the new ones played pretty well as it was. On release, it was actually around a 3060 level tier card, although Intel do suggest that this should be able to push up to something like an RTX 3070, but have they actually got there yet? I don't think that they really have, but they have been making some improvements. For one, those older games will actually start playing now. We had issues with a lot of uh, the older games that we like to play, and they actually wouldn't even start on this card. But nowadays they do start, but there are some kind of issues, and we'll take a look at those later. But to see if performance has actually increased, we've been doing some benchmarking. For this comparison, we used the drivers that were existingly installed on our machine all the way back from November last year. These were the 8302 drivers, and it was just before Intel made any improvement to the older DirectX games. And to compare, we are using the latest drivers, which are the 4032. Now, for anybody again that owns one of these, will know that Intel, just like the other brands, are running two sets of drivers at the moment. For those of you who like to have a little bit more of a tinker, they've made available their beta drivers. Now, these beta drivers can actually have issues in them. They are dropping them. You can use them, and your tool or your Intel Arc Control tool will actually install and upgrade them just like it will do with the recommended. We've decided not to use the beta drivers going forward because it, they do have their own issues and it's not a fair representation of the card, so we're using the recommended ones instead. But to find out if those drivers have actually made any difference, let's take a look at some benchmarks. Let's go. 
So as you can see from those benchmarks, there have been some significant improvements when it comes to the Intel Arc drivers, particularly around a lot of those modern titles. When comparing the results of the new drivers versus the old drivers in 1080p, we actually didn't see that much of a change across all of the games we tested. In A Plague Tale Innocence, using the old drivers, we managed to get an average of 94 frames per second. This was not bad and gave a great playing experience, and when moving to the new drivers, there was little change. Now getting an average of 97 frames per second, which is pretty much within tolerance of the test. Back for Blood was one game that did truly demonstrate a difference though, with the old drivers getting an average of 103 frames per second and the new drivers getting 134 frames per second. This was a 30% increase in performance and the difference in people wanting to run the game in 120 FPS or not. In Cyberpunk 2077 there was little difference between the drivers when it came to performance, the old drivers getting just 55 frames per second on average and the new drivers getting 56 frames per second, which again is within the tolerance of the tests. Death Stranding saw a reasonable improvement in performance between the new and old drivers. Using the old drivers we managed to get an average of 73 frames per second and the new drivers 85. This equated to an 18% increase which wasn't bad. Doom Eternal like always shot off the end of the chart. This very well optimised game doesn't tend to challenge a lot of hardware and there was no change here. Getting an average of 193 frames per second using the old drivers and 209 with the new drivers it gave us an 8% increase in performance. Not that you could really tell nor did it make a difference to how well the game played. Now God of War has tested most of the graphics cards we've had in the studio and there was no difference here using the old or new drivers. Getting an average of only 45 frames per second using the old drivers and a mere increase to 47 within the new. You couldn't get a great gaming experience with either. In Horizon Zero Dawn we got a very similar result as Death Stranding. There was a small increase between the drivers but nothing that provided much to the game or the playing experience. Getting an average of 65 frames per second with the old drivers and only increasing to 70 with the new. The last game in our test suite was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Just like Doom Eternal it is a well optimised game and runs pretty well on most hardware and the difference in performance between the drivers was around 10%. Not a bad increase really taking the average frames per second using the old drivers from 92 to 103 with the new ones. So those are the results of our 1080p benchmarks. Very little change in most games with the odd, well-optimized game seeing a decent increase. But what about 1440p? Well, this is where the Intel Arc graphics card really starts to shine. At 1440p in A Plague Tale Innocence we saw an increase of 15% when moving from the old drivers to the new ones. Using the old drivers we got an average of 73 frames per second, jumping to 84 using the new ones. Not a bad increase at all for simply updating a driver. The increases seen in Back for Blood were not as big as the ones we saw in 1080p, only seeing an increase of 15% in performance when moving from the old drivers to the new. But it was an increase either way, and not a bad one at all. Using the old drivers we managed to get an average of 102 frames per second, and the new drivers a respectable 117. Next up is Cyberpunk 2077 and just like the 1080p benchmarks we saw no difference in performance between the old and new drivers. Using the old drivers we got an average of 42 frames per second and the new drivers only 43 which is well within the tolerance of the test. Death Stranding in 1440p was the first game we tested where we actually saw the performance going the wrong way. With the old drivers we managed to get an average of 87 frames per second and the new drivers dropping back to 77. This was quite unexpected but actually isn't unusual when you see the rest of the results. In 1440p Doom Eternal saw one of the greatest improvements overall. Now with the new drivers we saw a 50% increase in performance which was absolutely awesome and really showed us where the card could get to with more work on the software. Using the old drivers we saw an average of 117 frames per second and with the new a whopping 173 frames per second. God of War like Death Stranding went backwards, the old drivers getting an average of 49 frames per second and the new drivers only 42. And it was the same story with Horizon Zero Dawn. Now we're not sure if there is something within these Sony ported games which the Intel Arc is struggling with but there was a common pattern across them all. Using the old drivers in Horizon Zero Dawn we got an average of 60 frames per second dropping to 55 on average with the new drivers. The last title we tested was Shadow of the Tomb Raider and there was simply no change. Using the old drivers we managed to get an average of 80 frames per second and with the new 79. Just like all the other driver drops though, this card does behave a little bit weird when it comes to some of those games. In particular the Sony games that we tested all saw a bit of a drop in their performance which was quite not expected particularly at the 1440p level but overall there was a bit of an improvement it's kind of like upgrading the graphics card which is pretty cool really from a free driver drop it all comes down to the types of games that you play just like in our previous testing the intel arc performs way better when it comes to 1440p resolutions which is really cool that they've gone that far because it means that they are 
actually future thinking. And I think the next generation of Intel cards, we're really going to see something really cool. But for us, we generally play a lot of old games and we have done a little bit of testing around some of the old titles that we wanted to play. This card actually lives in the machine behind us here and it is our studio gaming rig. We like to do a little bit of streaming on there and a little bit of multiplayer gaming, particularly in co-op games. And one of the games or one of the older games that we've liked to test with it was actually a game called Black Mesa. Now this is the rebuild or the remastered version of Half-Life 1 and unfortunately on the older drivers the game wouldn't even start. I mean you got the game to start but you would actually get a black screen and you wouldn't get any textures and things like that so the game was pretty unplayable. With the latest drivers though you can actually get the game to start but it doesn't mean that it is without issues. If you actually look a lot of the textures in the games just won't load. It's as if they're in the shadows and for some reason the Intel Arc is not actually rendering the light properly and this extends itself to later on in the game when you have to use a torch. When activating your torch in the game only some items will actually brighten up which makes the game really difficult to play particularly when you're on the darker levels. We did manage to skip through a lot of the game even in the dark patches but it wasn't a great experience so Intel have to do some more work with their older titles. We're going to keep testing this card as time goes on you probably won't see it for a while now because we're going to wait for several driver drops before we actually give it another test but it will stay remaining in our system and we'll see how it goes over time. Let us know in the comments below what you think of the Intel Arc graphics cards. Do you own one and have you seen a significant increase in performance? And also let us know what you think the next generation is going to look like. Are Intel actually going to make the improvements needed to really become the third player in this market? Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one.